Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm planting up this container full of some really pretty shade loving plants. And this area gets a little bit of filtered sun, but mostly shade through the day. We're right underneath a couple of juniper trees. In fact, we just put out a video where I planted some Empress Wu hostas and Mahogany Monster hookahs right behind me. If you missed that video, we will link it down below. They're beautiful plants, so definitely check that out. And this spot is kind of interesting because I have plants already planted in the ground that when they grow and like fill in and reach their maturity, I won't need anything else in this space. But in the meantime, I have little gaps. So I usually like to either plant annuals in those empty spaces or plant up a container like I'm doing today, pop it in the spot. And then as my plants grow and fill in, I can remove this um, to create a little bit of extra room. And I'm using mostly perennials. I've got four perennials and one annual here uh, for this container. And the whole reason I'm using perennials is because I actually want to have these in my landscape later. Um, but I'm not quite ready to plant them. So it's a really good idea to pick up those types of things at the garden center while the selection's really good in the spring. Plant them in a pot, enjoy them, and in the fall, plant them out, and then you can enjoy them for years to come in your garden. So the first thing I am planting is called a Diamond Lake Hosta. So this one grows about 17 inches tall. It has a massive spread, so 45 inch spread. So clearly this plant will not be happy in a container with a bunch of other plants for very long. I, th I would think like one season max, which is kind of perfect. I'll enjoy it here as a really bold accent and then I will plant it out. And for this type of plant in the landscape, you wouldn't need a whole bunch of them to create a really like bold effect. One would do it um, just with the boldness of the leaf. I love the blue color and this is really winter hardy too. Three, yeah, zone three through nine. So the next plant, which I planted right behind me is this mahogany monster hookra. Um, and I had one sitting there that I didn't end up using in this spot. And I thought, you know what, it'd be really pretty to have this in a container. I mean, like the contrast of these two plants is amazing. And this one is also fairly winter hardy. I wanna be sure on my details here. I think it's a zone four. Yeah, zone four through nine, grows 12 to 16 inches tall and about a 22 inch spread. So it's already a, a, like quite a large specimen plant and it throws up really beautiful bloom spikes, like kind of this burgundy color, and then they have like creamy pink blooms on them. So we'll have some um, interest there as well. And then a couple other plants I have, this is a Japanese tassel fern right here. And I just thought this is a beautiful, I mean, in the shade, it's beautiful to have some kind of a ferny texture. And I like the glossy color. And then my last perennial is this Goldilocks Creeping Jenny. I wanna have this one to cascade out of the front of the pot. And these are tough as nails. And the thing I love about them is they create a really dramatic drape out of a container. Instead of like some of your trailing plants wanna do a kind of a filling effect too, like they'll grow up and they'll grow over. This one has a pretty strict downward growth habit. And then the last plant right here is the Surefire Rose Begonia. Now this plant is a zone 10 through 11. So this is the only one that's not winter hardy for our zone five. You could pop this out of the container and bring it inside and treat it as a house plant for the winter time. They do well that way. Um, but I thought this would be pretty just as a little bit of um, extra added color. I thought it was really beautiful against the hookah foliage, really against all of it. So I may not end up putting all of these five plants in here, but I gathered them all thinking they were pretty together. So the first thing I'm going to actually do, because I have drip system in this area, in fact, I think the drip tubing is quite close. Yeah, I've got some brown drip tubing that runs right by these grasses. I'm going to hook this pot up to that system so that I never have to bring a hose out to water it. So I've got some quarter inch tubing that I'm going to tap into this system with and I'm gonna run it up through the bottom of the pot, through the drain hole. I'm gonna slide it right up through, there we go. And there's plenty of room for water to still drain out the bottom of the pot. This just makes it to where you don't see the tubing in the end. So to tie into the system, I'm gonna be using this straight coupler right here. I'm gonna push one end into the drip tubing that's coming out of the bottom of the container. And then to tie into my existing drip tubing, I'm gonna use this punching tool to make a hole. And then I'll grab my drip tubing and push it right in, just like that. So now the drip tubing is connected to the system, but before I put any emitters on, I'm gonna go ahead and fill my container full of soil. And I have some decent sized root balls I'm dealing with, so I'm not gonna fill it quite as full as I usually do. So now I'm just gonna put my emitters on and I'm using two half gallon emitters. I'm just gonna space kind of evenly in the pot. To do that, I have a cross coupler and I always like to put my soil in first because it kind of like settles my tubing in place a little bit. 
Um, so I'm gonna make a cut on my tubing about here and push my T in. And then I'm just gonna cut this little excess piece that I had in half and I'm gonna connect my emitters first. And I always do the pointy side, the pointy side goes into the tubing. Aaron just told me that some emitters don't have a pointy side, so just check your packaging to make sure you're putting the right side in. Case in point, these have different colors on the ends, but they both ha are half gallon an hour. So one just had blue on the opposite side <laughs> as the other one. So that could be a little bit confusing, but they are both half gallon an hour emitters. So I've got both of my tubes ready. Before I actually connect them to the T, I'm going to feed my stakes on. These will help me position the uh, emitters exactly where I want them to go. Okay, now we'll put them on the T. So that's basically what it looks like right there. And you can manipulate them a little bit, like you can you know, move the stake around or twist the tubing around to make them go exactly where you want them to go. But I'm just gonna flip them on the outside of the pot until I get a couple of plants in here. And I'm gonna start with the hosta first, and I'm gonna put it right on this side of the pot toward the back. And I love the shape of this hosta because it kind of has a natural opening on one side, which will make fitting the hookera in really easy and nothing will look squished. Let me make sure that I've got soil all the way around this root ball. All right, time for the mahogany monster. I'm just removing a tiny bit of soil off the root ball of this one so it slides down in a little bit easier. Oh, doesn't that look amazing? I can't even see it from the front and I think it already looks amazing. I'm gonna use the soil that I knocked off the root ball to kind of fill in some gaps here. Okay, so I think next it would be probably a best idea to tuck in my Creeping Jenny before it gets too full. And we'll just slide that right there. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness. Okay, I am gonna need a little bit more soil. And also before I put another plant in, let me slide the irrigation into place so that maybe you guys can see exactly where it's going. And I'm gonna put my first one right here. I'm just gonna stake it right into the hookera root ball. And the other one, I'm gonna stake this direction. So you can see in the end, I've got them kind of split apart to do half each of the container. Now we'll put the begonia in. And last will be the fern. Actually need more soil, like this is kind of abnormal for me. I usually don't have to add in any soil. I do think it turned out really pretty. I love the different mix of color and texture just of foliage right here. I mean, even without the bloom, I think this mix is gorgeous. But this begonia right here, it's a little bit on the smaller side right now, but it will grow and fill in this area here. will provide a little bit of color on that side. And really, in terms of maintenance, it's super easy. All I have to do today is water it in to make sure everything's settled. And then it's hooked into our drip system, which runs every single day. Um, so it'll be getting water. I'll be having to you know, keep my eye on it. That's the thing. When you set things up on drip, you're not done. Um, you still have to come in and give it weekly fertilizer. Uh, and then just make sure that like an emitter isn't plugged or something's not looking bad or getting too much water. Because sometimes you do have to adjust. It depends on where you live. It depends on what the weather is like. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this arrangement come together. I hope it inspired you to go out and plant something in your garden today. So we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.